and share my presentation with everyone. All right. Um, Welcome everybody to the Paramount, formerly Viacom CBS Virtual Career Tuesday. We're excited to have everybody here live as well as hosting this on our YouTube channel. As you know, the point of the Virtual Career Tuesdays is that we interview the interviewer. We talk to the employers to say, what do our students need to know about your organization? How do they become their best candidate? And what's the, the type of information that you can't get from just reviewing the website? So it's my pleasure to introduce Hunter Pritchard. Um, Hunter's new actually to Viacom CBS, which is now called Paramount. Um, for those of you that are on um, the different majors, um, Hunter was also at J.P. Morgan Chase and the University of Tennessee before. So she has this beautiful combination of knowing what an employer is looking for and also on the academic side, knowing what, you know, how we prepare students and help them with these roles. So Hunter, I'm going to let you take over um, her, you know, everybody can see the screen there. So then once we do, we're done with this presentation, then we can do some questions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, yes, I am here with Paramount. So excited to be talking to you all today. Um, definitely feel free, ask questions, throw things in the chat. You know, definitely keep this lively. I want to make sure that you're getting the information that you would like to hear from me. Um, so I definitely am just pumped to be here. So as Kathy said, my name is Hunter Pritchard. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I will be residing in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm actually moving there in like a month. Um, I'm in Dallas, Texas now. Um, and some of my favorite shows, I always like to include Big Brother, Amazing Race, and I love Siesta Key. Um, so if those are any hits for you guys, they're hits for me. Um, and we can chat about them anytime. Um, but as Kathy also said, you know, I kind of come with this multifaceted background of working in career services, kind of an understanding career development from that lens, professional development from that lens. And then I transitioned into a role with JP Morgan um, where I supported their recruiting efforts for predominantly corporate and software engineering. Um, and then I just recently transitioned to, at the time, Viacom CBS, now Paramount. Um, and really my role in kind of the key focus of what I do every day is engagements like this. Um, so I am technically a technology recruiter, but I also lead our campus relationships and partnerships endeavors. So I really set up those pipelines and really try to build those relationships with different campus communities. So my role is definitely multifaceted, but you know, I'm definitely excited to be here and hope that I'm able to give you guys some insight um, into, you know, career development, what us recruiters look like and what we look for. Um, and also that your career counselors and career coaches, they also know what they're talking about as well. Um, and they're really great resources for you guys. So definitely use them. So a little bit about the Paramount family. As you can see, we have a lot of brands that fall underneath Paramount. Um, you know, some of these, I think, don't even first come to top of brain. I know they didn't for me. Um, I kind of joined the team and was like, oh, my God, I had no idea we had the CW. And like, there were so many things that I just wasn't even aware of. But I always like showing this slide because I definitely want you guys to understand the scope of what opportunities exist here at Paramount because we hire underneath all of these brands. So. That's a lot of roles, a lot of opportunity, but also if you guys are thinking about going into the entertainment industry, going into particularly Paramount, it's important that you kind of have some of that brand recognition and you're starting to make connections toward entertainment industry, tech industry, business industry, and really seeing them from a multifaceted viewpoint. You know, I always like to joke to people, I'm like, we're not the Googles, the Facebooks, the Metas, the Apples. But we have the same opportunities, right? We're, we exist, we run as a business as well. Like we have the same opportunities housed underneath every single one of these brands. So um, lots of opportunity here, lots of things housed underneath the Paramount family. Also just kind of a highlight slide. 
we exist in a lot of places. We are a global brand and we're looking every day to continuously expand our brand into different markets, different areas. Um, we're in 184 countries, 45 languages. I always like to say SpongeBob is translated in every language in every country. And I think that's pretty amazing. Um, I grew up on SpongeBob, so that is so cool. Um, we also have, you know, a thousand live sporting events every year. We have local affiliate offices. Like we exist in a lot of places in a lot of areas. So as you kind of hear me talking, don't think you have to move to New York City. You have to move to LA. Yes, those opportunities exist in both of those locations, but they also exist well beyond that. Um, and I love to show this slide just again to really show you the scope of what we work with every single day. And I think all of these kind of help, you know, tell an integral piece of who we are um, because we're very proud of this. And these numbers are changing almost every day. You know, new subscribers, new networks were able to build, you know, all the channels were able to acquire on Pluto TV. So these are, you know, moments that are definitely something that we're proud of. Again, our mission, this is something that we kind of live by every single day. So, you know, this is really our North Star. This is guiding what we do, which is really unleashing the power of content. Um, and I think we try to do that through different development of our content. You know, we want to make sure that it's representative of who we are as an entertainment industry and who we are, you know, with the voice that we have. Um, I think having the brand CBS, having paramount as well-known industry leaders is important what we put out there and we want it to be representative and true to who we are um, and to speak the voices of those who work with us who are around us from our communities our cultures um, and really speak to us so i think everything that we do we're always kind of bringing this back to is it really serving what we want it to serve um, and i think that that speaks a lot so we kind of have three different pieces, um, if you will, that kind of makes up Paramount. So we kind of have our studio side, which is more of our global films, TV, digital content. So think of your Paramount pictures um, and our actual studio networks. Um, then we have kind of our regular networks, which is more of kind of your cable TV. So your MTVs, your CMTs. Um, and then we also have our streaming, which we're growing every single day it appears um and this is more of kind of our free and pay version so things like paramount plus that's your pay version but then pluto tv is your free version um and then obviously we've kind of started building out even more so what that looks like so bet plus we have showtime we have noggin um and really streaming is kind of the area that i focus and specialize the most in it tends to be the area that I lead a lot of our initiatives for. But just so you guys are aware, there are three pieces that kind of make us exist um, and kind of keep us up and running every single day. So when we talk about brands, sometimes we also think through like what part of the business they actually serve. We also do a lot socially. Um, and we do this a lot with our interns as well. So one of the pictures that you're seeing right now is um, from our internship class last year. And it was one of our projects that we had done with them um, on community building. And really the focus of us is we care about people. Um, and I, I love that about our company. Um, we're not just the people that do it as a check off box every single year that we are engaged as a community. Like, no, we literally go out in the community and we actually do things every day. And we even ingrain that as early as our internship programs. You know, as soon as you're brought on as a Paramount employee, you're engaged and you're committing at least to one community engagement. Um, and that can look like a lot of different things. And really the business wants you to choose, you know, things that you're passionate about, things that make the most sense and serve the communities that you want to the most. So we definitely do a lot um, to just support our local areas and, you know, the places that we're in. We also want to support our people. So we have what's called ERGs or employee resource groups. As you can see, we have a lot. Um, and we also actually have a new one that just started, um, which is a women in tech group, which is really, really cool. So 
just started I think like a month ago and I don't have the logo yet but we're gonna get it um but we have lots and lots and lots of different communities and I think the biggest thing is is you don't actually have to be a part of this you know demographic or whatever you can still be a part of the ERG so one of the ones that I particularly am a part of is beep um and as you can tell I am definitely Caucasian, um, but I'm very supportive of, you know, their initiatives, their policies that they're trying to go in and change. And, you know, also education is really big for all of these resource groups. So we have what's called a Slack channel, um, which we share, you know, different articles, different resources, different events that these groups are putting on. And it's really, really cool to be a part of. And so, you know, I don't have to be a part of the SOMOS group. Um, to still get content from them and still learn about who they are, what they're representing, you know, and really just educating myself even more, which I think is really important and really great. Um, because a lot of companies, again, may have these ERGs where you can just join them and it's like a check off that you were a part of it. Um, but this, you know, really, really, really tries to make you involved in each community and it really tries to educate you, which I think is an even bigger piece. All right, next slide, maybe. Okay, so tech and streaming, as I said, this is really kind of my bread and butter. This is where I tend to serve the most. Um, you will see my whole team here. So Sarah Pluggy, she is my manager. Um, you also obviously see me. Then we have two main lead recruiters, so Caitlin and Mariah, who are also tech and streaming recruiters. And then you see Sarah Hopkins. Um, she is our recruiting coordinator, so she does a lot of our scheduling, um, phone screens, things of that nature. So we are a small but mighty team. We work really, really hard to be super engaged with all different types of campus communities. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about our campus team. And also our entire campus team for tech and streaming is new. Um, I think Sarah Palugi, who was on the team, she joined in October of this past year. Um, so definitely a new team, but a very excited team to be here. Um, I believe Sarah came from City. Um, Caitlin, she came previously from the New York Reserve Bank, I believe. Um, and then Mariah came from Salesforce and then Sarah Hopkins just came from college. So she is new, new. So Hunter, there's this right. might be so, first time there's a question in the chat about your experience and it sounds like the experience of the recruiting team from all different industries and how that helped you transition to the position you're in now. Of course. So all experiences that you guys have, good or bad, um, kind of shape you into a, your professional, right? Like it, it builds your professional self. Um, and so I came initially from higher ed. I loved it. I thought it was great, but I kind of wanted something different. I felt like I wanted to change. Um, I'd always kind of toyed around with the idea of going corporate, but kind of was always afraid of it because I was a little bit intimidated by business, um, if I'm completely honest, and that was not ever really my background. So I had a little bit of that imposter syndrome thinking like, there's no way I can go corporate. I don't understand business. It seems very cut through. Um, I'm not gonna do well. So I definitely was scared of it for a good bit. And then, you know, amazingly enough, my husband and my family were like, you're great, you can do it. and. I still really didn't believe them, but as a career services professional, um, I worked every day with a lot of recruiters across a lot of industries and they started to come to me and say, why aren't you doing this? Um, and it got to the point where I was like, I don't know why I'm not doing it. So I ended up taking one of my friends up on an opportunity. She was like, apply, apply, apply. I put in for um, the big four accounting firms. I got pretty much immediately rejected um, and was completely disheartened. I was like, you know what? They solidified it. I shouldn't be in business. Um, and then I stumbled across this posting on LinkedIn for JP Morgan. 
And I told my husband, I'm like, this sounds really cool. This sounds like an adventure. I'm going to throw it out there, but I doubt they'll call me back. Um, I put in for it and I got a phone call the next day. Um, they immediately were like, you would be perfect. Come give it a shot. So I packed up my whole family, moved halfway across the country to Texas where I knew nobody. Um, and just went for it. I was like, you know what? I'm young. I'm an early professional. I just want to go for it. Worked at JP Morgan and honestly, I loved it. Like it, it was a great time. The people were really kind and I, I felt like I actually learned a lot about business in general. Um, and I think it built my confidence up a lot. I think, you know, I started to get more of the capability of seeing myself as a recruiter in a recruiter lens, you know, understanding how to find top talent, top, you know, candidates really working with people. Um, in such a different way than I ever had before. So it definitely inspired me. And um, I was pretty happy with my role at JP Morgan, honestly. And I got reached out to you by now Paramount. Um, and they were like, you should throw out an application. And I told my husband, I'm just going to go for it, see what they say. Um, I actually applied to a role and I got a phone call and they said, actually, we think you'd be a better fit for a different role. And I was like, oh, you actually read my resume. Cool. Um, and I went through the whole hiring process. I felt so happy with everything that they were telling me and how transparent they were about the process and what to expect. And I could tell that they were really eager and excited about me and I gave it a shot. So I've been here at Paramount and honestly, I can say it's the best decision that I could have ever made. Um, you know, I kid you not, they actually do look at every single resume that comes across our system. Um, you know, yes, we have an applicant tracking system. It also is not the best. Um, and we have it set to where if you apply to any of our roles, it actually does go to a recruiter. Um, yeah. And so every single application comes to us. Um, and so in that process, I have felt you know, just super pumped to be here. And I think JP Morgan really taught me um, a lot about myself, I think personally and professionally. And really, as I was transitioning into this role at Paramount, I knew kind of more so what I wanted to see for my role and how I wanted to develop it more than just even being a recruiter. And I wanted to do things like this, where I got to work with campuses and they really made that happen for me. So I know the other team kind of has similar backgrounds and stories, but um, definitely just want to encourage you, like, go for it. You know, like, do not hold yourself back. Do not think that you can't get on with a big name company. I mean, I worked for, I've worked for several big name companies. Like it, it can happen to you. I'm just somebody from a very small town in rural North Carolina. And I went to a local, you know, college that does not have a big name or a big reputation. And I did very average, I guess, in life for the most part. You are but, not giving yourself you know, enough. I was surprised. <laughs> you know, I was surprised that they called me. I was like, why do you hear my accent? And like, you're wanting me to talk to people every day. Um, so it's, it's been good, honestly. And I definitely encourage you, like, don't be intimidated or shy from opportunities. Um, and to believe in the things that you've done because they matter and they're important. So that's my soapbox, yeah. I guess. Do we have Thank any you. other questions so far? Well, there's some other questions, but I think um, they're they're probably ones that you're going to answer a little bit farther along. But just thank you for that. You know, just kind of taking a moment to share with the students your path, and you know, it speaks a lot yeah. to Paramount as well. You know that. You know, they reach out and they say, well, here's one position you applied for, but here's another one that we think you might be better for. So, so many lessons in there. So I'll let you do this and then we'll go back to the couple of other questions. Cool. Sounds good. So about tech and streaming, there's kind of two different branches that you could be a part of. So we have Paramount Streaming, um, which again, kind of has more of that Pluto TV, Paramount Plus, those type of brands, um, BET Plus, Noggin, all the things. Um, and then there's Paramount Technology, which is more of our cybersecurity, our tech teams, business risk, program management, product management, um, and some of our more corporate roles. We even have some IT based roles as well. So a lot. There's a lot of roles that exist under tech and streaming. 
So opportunities to work with us. I told y'all I have a lot of SpongeBob in here. Um, types of roles at Paramount. So technology and streaming is just one part of the business. So again, even though that's predominantly what I serve, you know, there are other sides to the business as well. So there's kind of our corporate side. So these would be your finance, some of your business roles. These would be some of those accounting roles, HR roles. Um, we also have our news stations. So anything from media, entertainment, um, and then we also have marketing and content. So kind of self-explanatory, but a lot of our marketing roles, a lot of our content roles, social media roles, um, all of that. So multi sides to the business. I like to show the slide to again emphasize like, yes, we are in the entertainment industry, but we also are a business and we also are a big corporation that has a lot to make us run every single day. So for my team in particular, as you can see, there's a lot even within tech and streaming that we hire for. So it's not just, oh, you come on and you work a tech internship. No, you can work a lot of internship roles. There's many. Um, so everything from product management, info security, data, software engineering. Um, and I will emphasize too, any of our internships here at Paramount, they are non-major specific. So if you have an interest area, put in for it. Um, I cannot stress that enough, you know, and really use that phone screen, your resume, your cover letters, things of that nature to really tell us why you're interested, why you're passionate about the space and maybe why you want to learn more. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to put in for a role with us. We, we have spaces for everyone here for the most part. Um, and so if say you have a unique background and you're a marketing major, but you're really interested in UX or UI, put in for it. We like to see it. It brings a new perspective and a new lens to any role. So, um, a lot of our roles as well that you'll see posted have pretty broad job descriptions. That's for a reason. So when we actually bring you on, um, you set up time with your manager, which your manager is going to be your manager for 10 weeks straight. Um, so you do build a relationship with them. But really, you work with them one on one to map out what your summer looks like. Um, they want you to do projects that you're excited about and things that excite you. Um, so you and that manager will work together to kind of map out your summer experience. Um, and I also want to say we love to hear like actual feedback as well. We're a company that thrives on criticism and, you know, critiques. And so if you're not getting that summer experience that you want, tell them, you know, we have lots of projects, lots of things that we're continuously working on and building. Um, so maybe you get in and you're like, I love this aspect. Don't really like this aspect so much. They might help you even further develop in the area that you do like. Um, so be very vocal, you know, let your managers know what's going on with you and how you're kind of feeling. But again, like to say, even in the tech space, there is a lot that we offer and I'm sure I probably missed even some more roles that we have. So this is just to kind of give you some ideas of some things that'll be posted. All right, so internship program overview, and this kind of goes as a whole. So things we're looking for, juniors, seniors, we have master's level roles as well. Um, for technical roles, we're open to rising sophomores who maybe have classes that they've taken, certifications that they might have done on their own or independently. We're willing to look at you, willing to talk to you if you have you know that certain skill set for whatever role that you're applying for. Um, it is a 10 week summer internship that starts in June. There are two start dates in June um, that lead to like two end dates in August. So really good to work with you on kind of a time frame, just depending on when your semester ends or your quarter ends, we can kind of work with you. Um, all of our roles, internship roles are paid. So any position internship that you work at Paramount, you're gonna get paid for it. Um, pay rates vary depending on the roles, somewhat of the experience, if it's a tech technical role, if it's a non-technical role, really varies, um, but I can guarantee you will get paid. 
Um, and then also, if you need it for college credit, or if it's a part of your major that you complete an internship for the summer or things like that, we work with you through that. Um, again, you can see some of those placement areas that tech team has in specific. Um, I will also say if you are an international candidate, um, we do work with you as well. So don't be discouraged. Um, you know, if you're qualified, if you're interested, you have that passion put in for it. You know, we will try and accommodate the best that we possibly can. So we do work with CPT, OPT. We, we will try to make sure that you um, are able to be a part of our community as well. So internship program locations, these are just a few, again, few of the places that we have, but these tend to be some of our more larger hubs or where we see a lot of people choosing to go. Um, but that does not mean that there's not other locations that exist or places that you could report into. Um, obviously, we have our major, major headquarter, which is right in New York City on Times Square. Um, and then we also have our very big um, Paramount Studios. It's in Hollywood. Um, and then we have a huge location in San Francisco. So these are just some of the big hubs. But again, we can work with you on what that looks like. Internship components. Um, so throughout your time doing an internship with us, we really focus on professional development business learning, we do a lot of networking and social events, we have a mentorship program, and we're also focused on general wellness. So things like we have tons of these like apps. I don't know if some of you are familiar with things like Headspace. Um, we also do a workout program that's available to all employees and interns where you can do like workouts anytime. So literally like yoga to Pilates to whatever you're interested in. So. I know several people on my team will do like straight up Pilates during their lunch break. Um, I think that's crazy. You will not see me in those classes, but they exist. We do have them. Um, I'm way out of shape for that, but we have lots of opportunity for growth here. And again, like this is a part of any of the internships that you do. So say you come in as a marketing intern, um, you will get very similar things. So. That's a little bit about kind of the internship program. So kind of what we look for when we're hiring um, is people that have that innovative mindset. So people who are creative, people um, that are ideas people, I always say. So, you know, if you have that kind of knack for creativity, ideas, you know, working in a space where you can just like voice your opinion, that's here. Um, I definitely have felt like there's tons of projects that I probably throw on my manager's plate like every single day and she has yet to tell me to stop. So definitely encourage it. Definitely a fun place to be. And we're always trying to think of how can we be a step ahead? How can we be doing something even better, even more advanced? So, um, you know, kind of having ideas is really encouraged. Relevant coursework, you know, having classes, projects, you know, things that you've potentially done, all good. Um, showcasing your personal brand. So we like to see who you are, you know, like we hire for you. We we hire to see, are you going to be a fit with the team um, based on your personality? Are you excited about the work? Are you passionate about the industry? Um, are you excited about the brands? Do you, you have, you know, just that innate excitement. Um, that's what we really look for. Um, relevant skills and experience. It's always nice to see, nice to have. Leadership, extracurricular, passion for media, brand knowledge. So again, you know, none of these are fully set. Like it's not a checkoff list. You don't have to go through and be like, I have done one leadership activity. Like don't use this as a checkoff list. This is just holistically things that we look for, things we like to see. Um, but honestly, everybody's journey is completely different. And so, you know, we take everything into consideration. And as I said, you know, they called me for a completely different role. Um, that should give you comfort. We do the same thing. So now that I've been hired, I'm a recruiter here. We actually do a resume share where we have it between the entire campus team, but also the tech and streaming team. So, 
Um, if I get a candidate who I'm like, you know what, they applied to my rec, but I don't really think that they're a fit, but I think they might be better on Caitlin's team. I send them straight to Caitlin. So that is something that I have found that's very unique here at Paramount. I've not known anywhere else that does that. It's usually a, they're, they're not qualified for my role and they move on. Um, but here we really do try and find where does it make the most sense? We do want to get you hired. We want to get you here. So we do understand everybody has different backgrounds. So a little bit about timeline. I know this is always a favorite question. So currently this summer, we are pretty much full for this class. Um, we will re start looking at applications come August, September timeframe. So applications should open late August into early September. Um, we will start reviewing those applications and interviewing kind of on a rolling basis. So as they come in, we're gonna be reviewing, inviting people for phone screens, um, kind of the October, November timeframe interviewing offers and the December and January filling any last minute roles that we may have that come up or any that the business may add last minute because they did that a lot this year. Um, so it really just kind of varies, but I like to say this is not a super, super firm timeline. You know, if you interview in September, you may also get your offer in September. Um, this is kind of that rolling basis scenario. So if you interview, we like to move people through the process. We will tell you either way, if you did get it or if you didn't get it, you will hear some sort of response from us. We will not keep you in the dark. Um, so just know that this is kind of flexible. It's not kind of the rule, um, if you will. It is something that we kind of work through gradually as things kind of keep progressing throughout the season. Another brag slide, um, I always like to kind of show this and saying, you know, what I'm kind of preaching to you is not something that is just me blowing smoke. You know, there is fire. There is actual proof in what I'm saying to you that we have continuously been ranked for being a top place for internships, a best place to work, you know, somewhere that promotes work life balance. Um, you know, indeed best places to work. So again, you know, big name brand companies complimenting the work that we do. Um, I will say having worked in multiple areas for multiple companies, this has been the greatest that I've been a part of. Um, they really do care about the people here. As you guys may have heard at the very beginning, my son is at home sick today. My manager was like, do whatever you need to do. Like, if you need to take the day, take the day. If, you know, you have things that are you're committed to, then like, do that and that's it, log off. So they care, they care about who you are. And to me, especially as a mom, that's something I value greatly. You know, you can't help when your babies are sick, so you have to take care of them. And, you know, they have definitely fully embraced that. And that's something that's really, really special to me. But beyond that, they very much care. Um, last week, we had a transition of our applicant tracking system. They told the entire HR division, take the two days off. They're like, use them as mental health days. You guys have been working hard, take off. And again, I've never worked for a company that does that. They would find something else for us to do in the meantime. Um, so the fact that they were like, you know what? You guys have been going through the recruiting season. It's been hard. It's been tough. Take off, you know, relax. Um, and so that's really, really nice. So again, I know it's kind of a brag slot, but I definitely see the value in it. And like I say, like, it's not fake here. It's very genuine. They, they do care about you as employees and even as interns. So we've had interns before who had had made prior engagements. Tell your manager in advance. That's it. <laughs> like really no questions asked, um, which is amazing. So definitely a great place to be. So that's kind of my main spiel, but I do want to say that we do have all the socials, but there is also an email address on there as well. Definitely reach out to us. That email is checked daily. So if you guys have questions, if you think of things, even if it's not necessarily tech and streaming related, feel free to still email it to us. We can push it to the right people if it's not us. So 
you know, be engaged with us. If you guys want, you can add me on LinkedIn, ask me questions there and stay in touch with me. I tend to share a lot of roles that open up or opportunities that exist at Paramount. So definitely feel free. I like to always say, you know, I'm open to connecting with anyone and helping you in your journey and hopefully helping you be successful. Um, so if I can do that, I definitely want to be there for you. So that's pretty much it. That is wonderful. You gave us so much information. Um, and of course, I always have like some follow up questions because there's so much that you said. And again, we want to encourage the students if you've got questions, either put them in the chat or raise your you know, raise the proverbial uh, hand here. A couple things. So you said showcase, you know, showcasing all of their experiences, right? So through a cover letter or a resume, what do you look for in those documents that would help them to showcase that those experiences? Of course. So I always like to think of your resume as maybe like your 30 second commercial, right? Because we're only going to look at it for like 15 to maybe 30 seconds if you're lucky. Um, so always kind of keep in mind that it should be to the point. We don't want to see long lengthy paragraphs. We want to see bullet points. We want concise bullet points, nothing that's too crazy. Um, but really keep in mind resumes short to the point. Um, if you have, you know, depending on what you're putting into or if you're a grad student, but if you're an undergrad student, um, you know, keep it to that one page, you know, keep it concise. Um, as far as a cover letter goes, I like to say that this is really your story, right? You're adding meaning to the resume. So, you know, do not reiterate everything that was just on your resume because I already read your resume. I want a cover letter to tell me how those experiences made you into the person you are today and how that person is going to be the best professional for me today. Um, so use those lived experiences. Tell me about them. Um, you know, I, I want to hear more about you and how you're going to hopefully be, you know, grow from the role that you're putting into or how the roles that you've been a part of have shaped you and made you even stronger. I don't want to see just a regurgitation of your resume. Um, so that's really what I look for when I read a cover letter is I, I want something that entices me beyond just saying the same things I already read. Excellent. And then we talked a little bit about the process, right? So you said the first is like Sarah does a phone screen. So is that like just a short kind of tell me about yourself, but also sort of your benchmark to know, does this person who's talking to me even know who Paramount is and are they in intentionally applying here. So like that, that gatekeeper. Yeah, Sarah tends to be a good gatekeeper. Um, so it is a very short, maybe 25 minute phone call. And it's really just tell me who you are. Tell me a little bit of your background. Sometimes Sarah will call and say, kind of like I said, hey, you put in for this role, but we actually think you're better for another role. Are you interested? Do you want me to tell you about it? So those phone calls can kind of look different depending on the situation, but yeah, it's really just a, who are you? You know, like we read your stuff. We were intrigued by you. You had background that was really interesting to us and we think you could be a fit here. You know, why are you interested? And I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of students who just kind of throw out a whole bunch of applications and hope something sticks. So, you know, that's kind of that opportunity you know, of finding out, are they genuine or do they have the passion? The, can they talk to us about, you know, growing up and watching SpongeBob all day? You know, like those kind of things. We, we love to see it. And I always joke, I totally nerded out on my whole phone screen because I was like, oh my God, I watch MTV all the time. Um, but they love that, you know, they love to see that that's something that you're passionate about. So phone screen, and then we typically move into a then manager interview, and it can be one or two managers if they're both hiring for, you know, the same role, but maybe under different brands. Um, and again, those aren't quizzes, it's a conversation. So don't go into it thinking that we're assessing you and it's a test. Um, it's really just to try to understand who you are and Maybe, you know, you have a particular audience that you want to support or serve. You know, we've had students before who are like, you know what? I'm really interested in sports. 
Um, and I would love to be under CBS Sports because I watch all their games and I do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, and then they go on and do sports and data analytics for CBS Sports. So those conversations are really more so just trying to figure out your interest area and where we could potentially move you into. Um, there is no technical component of our interviews at this moment. So oh, if you are job. interested in kind of the techie side of the house, um, no, we do not like code test you. Um, we're not, we don't do that. Um, not saying we won't ever, but we definitely don't right now. Um, and that's again, we just don't want people to think it's a test. Um, we just want to get to know you personally first. And Ken, if you asked a question, would you like to unmute yourself and ask it to Hunter? Yeah, so I was just going to ask if you like recommend any like, um, extracurricular activities for like, I guess for all the students, but like, especially for like marketing major like me. Yeah. So honestly, there's not necessarily a, a check off sheet as you would think, like, you know, if you're going to go into extracurriculars, I definitely say like student organizations can be a great part of that and can kind of give you robust experience with the things that they're doing, I think can be a great way. Um, I would say there's even some just like general professional organizations that's not necessarily associated with a student org or, you know, whatever. Um, that can be really great to join. You can get some really great contacts that way. There's also sometimes job boards that are associated with that as well. Um, but honestly, as far as extracurriculars go, I think it can vary. It can look different depending on each person. I've, you know, seen some marketing students who are like, I... I'm an Instagram influencer and I'm like, good for you. Like the amount of time that that takes to edit a video, like you go girlfriend, I cannot do that. Um, you know, that means I have to look like decent every day. So yeah, I mean, honestly, it could look different depending on what you're applying to or what you're interested in. I mean, you could even be editing videos on YouTube. Great. You know, like I think we just really want to see that passion and, and it can look a lot of different things for different people. So definitely encourage you if you're thinking the marketing field, just thinking through how you want to sell yourself, how you want to brand yourself um, and really thinking through, you know, what experiences can maybe put you one step ahead. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you Hunter for this presentation. It was super insightful. Um, so just thinking about how you transitioned from a career at JP Morgan, it's so like a very, you know, like financially, obviously motivated institution and that sort of thing um, to more of a creative entertainment company. Is there anything different that you'd say you look for for applicants towards like this sort of an organization compared to a more, um, I don't want to say refined, but a, a more, I think like there's very different in a sense. So is there anything like different that you look for in applicants? Yeah, I mean. Personally, I went into JP Morgan um, predominantly because when I was working at the Career Center at UT Knoxville, my main student population was accounting, finance, business analytics. And so a lot of my recruiting contacts was the financial industry. Um, and so I just kind of took that leap because of that and also um, Personally, my dad is an accountant, um, and so I thought, okay, I can do this too. I can work with these people. Like, I like my dad. He's he's chill. So I think I think this could be good. Um, went there, and I just totally realized this, this is just not the atmosphere for me. I, I'm, I am a super ideas person, and I'm a super creative body, and I think for me, um, being somewhere where they have everything tailored, they have it down to a science and they're not really looking to change anything because what they do already works so well. Um, mm -hmm. I knew that that was not the space for me. I was like, I want to be somewhere where I can throw down a million ideas. And um, when I was talking during my interview process to my now manager, I was like, look, I'm gonna come to you 80 times a week with a new idea what are your feelings? And she was like, please do. Um, so I knew just culture fit wise for me that I was making a good decision. But as far as like looking for candidates and what I like to see, I think a lot of it comes one from instinct. I think of, 
seeing and feeling those people who are the most passionate, who really, when they talk to me, you can tell they're excited or, you know, they have just that innate, like, understanding, um, you know, and I really try to hire based off of people who are excited to be there, um, not just because we're paramount, but for the role, you know, I can tell they've studied it. They know it. They know what I'm looking for. Um, and I can tell they've researched, they, they've developed the whole concept of the conversation almost in their head before they even talk to me. Um, and so I love that. I love to see that they care. Um, and so I think you get that in both industries and in both areas, because I think, you know, there are finance students who go to JP Morgan and you can tell they're passionate, excited, and they have that same energy. Um, so really that's what I look for. No matter what industry I'm in, I look for people who are excited to be there. I love that. That's really good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. And for applying for positions. So for everybody, you know, at UConn, you know that there's the handshake account, right? So Paramount does, if you search under Paramount, you'll see it shows there's probably about 12 jobs in there right now. Some of them are in Hunter's area, but they're all across the company, right? So paying attention to the different roles um, for seniors, as you get closer to graduation, more of those roles are going to open up as well. And so I wouldn't rely just on handshake for the senior roles. I think there's a lot of them that, that may not get to handshake. Um, one of the things that I, I thought was wonderful was, you know, on the slide that you showed, unleashing the power of content, right? So like using Paramount's words back to them, you know, use that cover letter, use the, the resume, the storytelling to make yourself the candidate that, that they're looking for. Are there any students that are on here right now who have another question that they want to ask? Because I just want to be mindful of everybody's time. Yes, uh, Sunny. Uh, hi, Hunter. Thank you for an amazing presentation. Um, so I'm currently a senior right now and, you know, I've been working, I'm about to graduate soon. Like in terms of advice, like what would you give me for like maybe interning, finding a job, like what's best interning at this point, or maybe looking for a job and, you know, like hearing this presentation about Paramount is amazing. Well, how creative you are and how welcoming the company is and the ideas that flow is just great to hear from you. Yeah, so I would definitely, well, one, thank you. Thank you for complimenting my presentation. Um, but I would definitely say for us, I would keep in mind we have a few options. So we do things like fellowships, um, which exist. I think there's only like two maybe posted on Handshake, but I do know in general we have fellowship programs, which can be rotational programs, sometimes fellowship programs. That can sometimes be a good foothold, um, especially as you're still maybe kind of close to that graduation time frame, but not sure maybe a particular area that you want to be in or still kind of want that exploration piece, that can be a good go. Um, I would also say we do have some early careers. So, you know, kind of those aspects where we only want, you know, zero to two years of experience, you know, so we do have those really early career roles. Um, I would say probably a fellowship in, Fellowship, rotational program, or an early careers role would probably make the most sense. I mean, you could probably do an internship, but that would probably be less likely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple of ways that you could navigate it, honestly. Um, yeah, and I would say go to your career counselor, look and see what kind of roles exist at Paramount and maybe talk through them and see, you know, what make the most sense for you to apply to. So that way you're not throwing out like 30 applications because they take time, um, you know, kind of strategize with them a little bit too, just depending on your like particular situation and what experiences you've already had, how that can translate into our setting um, to make sure that you're applying for the things that make the most sense. But I would say it depends. Um, there's a lot of things that could exist. Hunter, I think it's wonderful because as soon as you said, like, talk with a career counselor, one of our career counselors, Judy Stewart, was writing in the chat. If you're a senior with work experience, consider meeting with your career counselor for applying to early career roles and using LinkedIn and the UConn alum that are at Paramount. So you, you've always got great advice for us. 
and, and we really appreciate all of the insight that you offered here and just that genuine sense of, you know, we all want to go work at Paramount now. So next step is finding the, the people to connect to, finding the opportunities that are open and then creating that excitement. Um, we have about one more minute. Any other questions or was there anything that um, that you wanted to share, Hunter, that I haven't asked about? Mm -hmm. Not particular, but really just again, want to reiterate, like, feel free, add me on LinkedIn, connect with me there, you know, ask me questions if you think about them when you get home, or maybe you just didn't feel comfortable asking them in this type of setting. That's okay too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I totally get it. Feel free, add me. I'm a super social butterfly, so feel free. Um, and if you think of questions, ask me. I'm not shy in the least, happy to answer them. That's my job, and that's why I'm here. Um, but otherwise, I've enjoyed being here and you guys had some great questions and, you know, I hope that I can kind of be a support to you all as you transition and start looking into internships, full time roles and how I can just kind of help you in the process. Outstanding and for those of you that are on and those. Well, for those of you that are on, remember, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can go into the search button and search for all of the employers that have taken the time like Hunter to talk to us. Um, there's probably 30 to 40 employers now that have come to talk to UConn School of Business students to say, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what you can do to work with our companies. So thank you to everybody for joining us. And Hunter, I so appreciate you being here. I'm going to stop recording now.